Hi, this is Elisha, and this is podcast for um, Vigilante Medicine, and I've actually been trying to do this all day, and I'm at a point where I have so much information that I'm having difficulty whittling down what to say. And so um, I want to answer the question that I've been give it, getting most frequently, which is what has gotten me so fired up about this. And the truth is that um, about three, four weeks ago now, I found a lump in my breast and scared the bejesus out of myself. And um, I went in for a 3D mammogram and it turns out I did not have breast cancer, but what I do have is something called fibrocystic breast disease in both of my breasts. And I got to see the images of all of these cysts in both of my breasts. And um, when I asked the doctor what I could do about that, he said, come back in a year for another mammogram. And I said, no, seriously, what can I do about that? And he said, well, some women have reported a little success if they reduce their caffeine intake. And I was shocked, amazed. Um, how, how could that be? And so when I went back to my computer immediately and typed in fibrocystic breast disease treatment, um, what came up were all these articles about iodine. And that's what got me started on this whole thing. Um, and in researching iodine, I've come across so many things now. And, and the thing that I came across, as I think I was alluding to last week, is salt and this really different way of experiencing my understanding of salt. And I actually read this book this weekend, Salt Your Way to Health by Dr. David Brownstein. And, um, and what I'd like to do is I've whittled this down to three questions that I'm going to answer over the next three days so that I don't have to try to fit uh, everything into one video. I'm just going to tell you what we're going to be talking about this week. So um, first of all, it's important to know how much salt, and all of this has to do with everything, I promise you. The next question is, what kind of salt? And what I mean is the argument between refined and unrefined salt, which we started talking about, but I'm going to get more into that. And then the third question we need to answer is, why is salt important? And um, I think you're going to understand by the end of this a really different way to view salt and its um, role in, in our health. And so um, I'm, I'm going to make this video very short today and just say that this is what we're going to be talking about. And I want to thank everybody for all the questions that you've been sending in. and. Um, and I want to just say that my stepfather, who until recently, to my knowledge, really didn't even know how to use his smartphone, has gotten so fired up on his own about this that he came to me with a list of all of the foods besides seaweed that you can eat uh, that are really high in iodine. So um, I'm glad to know that it's inspiring other people to uh, look at their health. And in fact, they were we had dinner last night and had a, an hour-long conversation about the benefits of salt and the difference between refined and unrefined. And um, I mean, it's just it's I'm loving all the conversations that it's spawning. So I hope it's also creating conversations in your world. And um, and like I said, we're going to be talking about how much, what kind. And why is salt important this week? And then we'll wrap up with a little bit more about um, iodine. And then we'll jump into seaweeds next week. So thank you for, um, for watching. Thank you for being curious. Thank you for taking this into your own hands and um, taking back the night of health, I guess. And, um, and I really look forward to continuing this journey with you. And I'm really trying to make this as clear as possible, which is why I'm going to just going to go slow on this one until tomorrow. So I hope you have a really great day. And I'm sorry it's so late in the day, but this, um, this is when it is. Okay. Good health to you.